In this tutorial, we're going to show you the process of importing a bitmap into the software, how to size and position it, use the trace bitmap tool to create vectors. Also, we're going to look at key ways to edit those vectors after they were created. Quality of the vectors will depend on the quality image. To get started, we're going to open up a new session of our software and we're going to create a new file. Now, the job setup for this tutorial is going to be a single sided job. The width is going to be 12, the height is going to be 4 inches, and the thickness of material we happen to have on hand is going to be 0.75 inches thick. We're going to zero off the top of our material and the datum will be set to the center. And then we're just going to click OK. Now to import in a bitmap for tracing, we're going to use the import bitmap function. We're going to click that and then seeing as I've installed the tutorial, we're going to find a liberator underscore poster dot JPEG. We can select that and click open. Now right away, it's going to import in the bitmap and going to place it directly into the center of our job, which is fantastic. And it's also going to create a brand new layer for us called bitmaps. Now this is important because it's going to make sure that our bitmap is always behind our vectors when we're drawing them. So it won't cover up anything that we're working on. So just off click that. Now let's go to our center and select our bitmap. If you click it once, it's selected. If you click it again, we'll be presented with the handles that we can use to change the shape and the size and the distortion of this particular bitmap. So we can go ahead and grab a sizing handle and we can scale it up or scale it down. We can hold in our shift key and scale it up or scale it down and it scales from the center. We can go ahead and rotate it by using these handles if we'd like. Let's just undo that. And we can put it back in the center where it belongs by pressing F9, seeing as we've moved it around. Now in this particular case, what we want to do is we actually want to straighten this bitmap out. So we're going to use the rotation handle. We're going to hold down our left mouse button and drag it around. And what I'm looking at is the word cycles. So I'm going to try and make it so that the bottom of that word is relatively flat, assuming that that is the way it should be. And then we're going to click that. Now, because we have distorted this a bit by disrupting the grid of pixels that the bitmap is sitting on, it looks a little rough. And depending on the quality of the bitmap we use at first, the amount of distortion that we see will change. In this particular case, we used a really poor bitmap, so it's going to look not so great. If we used a really high quality bitmap, then you probably wouldn't even notice the distortion at all. But we can fix that in this case by right clicking on this bitmap and going down to bake the rotated bounds. Now I want to point something out to you. It says rotated bounds. So when we bake this, we're going to get a brand new bounding box that's going to encompass all of this rotated bound. So our bitmap will get bigger. And I'm going to show you how to fix that in the end. So let's bake that. And you'll see that it cleans up the bitmap the best it can and makes it look much better. Now, like I had mentioned, the, the new bitmap is larger than what the old one was. And if this might be okay, and it might not really matter in the end, but if we do want to size this up to a specific size based on the, the text, we don't want to have to worry about subtracting off this negative space here. So what we're going to use, we're going to use this feature here, crop a bitmap. But before we can do that, we need to actually have a vector to crop the bitmap to. So if we go and choose draw a rectangle, we're going to drop in a rectangle just that encompasses all of our text and we'll crop it off closer to our text than what the new bounding box is. That looks great. And we're going to apply that and close. And holding down our shift key, we can select that new rectangle we just created and the bitmap. And we're going to go ahead and click crop bitmap. And you'll see that if we select the bitmap, it's now the size of our box that we created or our rectangle. I'm going to select that rectangle and press delete because we're all done with it. Now that we've got that cropped the size that we want it to be, we're going to go ahead and select that and we're going to size it up to be 11 inches wide. We're going to make sure that we have our link X and Y selected. That way it'll automatically scale the height and we can click apply and then we're going to close that. And just to be sure everything is centered nicely and you can see that it's not quite centered perfectly because the bitmap is selected, we can click F9 and it's now centered in our job space and we're ready to go ahead and start the tracing. 
Okay, we could start out by tracing this by hand if we wanted to, but we may as well get our leg up and start with one of the built-in features. So if we select that bitmap or make sure that it's selected, we can choose the trace bitmap option. And right there it says fit vectors to selected bitmap. So if we click that, we're gonna be presented with two different options um, or types of trace. And so we can use color or we can use black and white. For this particular tutorial, we're gonna start off with black and white and we'll work back to color. So if I click black and white, what's gonna happen is the software takes the bitmap, all the colors in the bitmap, and decides whether it's closer to white or closer to black, and then switches the colors for us. So we can use this threshold slider to help the software decide how it figures out which it's gonna choose, white or black. And the things to look for when using this slider are things like right here, where the B is connected and if we slide that up and down you'll see that it will actually get unconnected so when we go ahead and trace it then that'll actually be unconnected in the final trace which is a much better thing than having it connected also you can look at different curves and so on you can see whether or not it's making a good choice for you or not now with this particular case we should use the color option so we're going to click that and we have a selection slider here that we can move up and down with this particular tool, it will automatically give us a maximum color of 16. So we'll take all the colors in the bitmap and reduce those down to 16. But then we can take it from there and we can choose even less colors if you'd like. And you can see that our color palette, all of our swatches start to reduce as we move this slider down. And we want to put it around four for this particular bitmap. And then we can go ahead and choose what colors of these four it would like to actually trace. And as we select these colors, it's going to turn that combination of colors to red. So if we choose black and then the next darker color, you'll see that things change in the view, the red. Now we can change our trace color to be whatever color you'd like, depending on maybe the bitmap might be useful to change the colors. Or what we can do is also use the bitmap fading down here so you can get a better look at what's going on. Now we're, I'm pretty happy with choosing just the black. So let's go with that and we're gonna hit preview. Now there's some other options down here that might help us get a better trace if we're not quite happy with that. We can use the corner fit. So we can go ahead and trace it very loosely, which you're not gonna see much of a change in this case, or we can choose to trace it really tight and you'll see that it's gone around and most some of these aren't curves anymore, they're actually straight lines. We'll turn that back to the default corner fit for now and then we'll click preview to bring it back to where it should be. And that looks great. We can also reduce some of our noise. Now you'll see that there's some pink here in the corner. Now that could have been traced. If we had had our noise turned way down to one and click preview, you'll see that it's actually tracing those little patches. We don't necessarily want that noise to be actually traced. So we can just slide this up slowly to the point that those little areas aren't being traced. And as soon as we find that sweet spot, then we can stop with that slider and that looks perfect. Now again, the bitmap fading is just to help you visualize what you're doing a bit better. Now if we're happy with that, we can choose to group the resulting vectors, which we don't want to in this case, um, and then we can just click apply and then close and we have the vectors and they're all by themselves. They're not grouped together, which is kind of nice. Now we can still see the bitmap and it's a bit confusing right now. So let's go up to our layers and we're going to hide our bitmap layer so that we can go ahead and delete out these extra pieces that we don't need. If you're happy with that, you can go ahead now and create tooling from those vectors. But let's go ahead and show you how to make things a little bit better if you need to. So when we actually ran the trace bitmap on this, it did a nice job, except for there are a few spots like right here, where this vector is kind of cut off, or in here where the vector isn't quite round. It's not, it doesn't look very smooth there. So if we select that and we go into node mode by pressing N on the keyboard, we can go ahead and fix some of those problems. So the first thing we can do is maybe delete out this smooth, this smooth node. So if we hover over top of it and press D on the keyboard, let's delete, then we can go ahead and fix that. This spot right here, we can hover over those nodes. We can right click and go to smooth point 
and that'll actually smooth those out for us and make those look pretty good. Now, there's a whole video that you can watch on the US belt buckle that we will link below in the, the videos and you can go ahead and look at that and it'll show you how to do even more than what I can show you here. This guy here, we might just kind of, oh, sorry. We're just gonna grab him and move him and line him up more like this. That looks good. And so you can go ahead and move through your whole outline, your vector outline, and correct any little errors that you see. And then when you're all happy with that, you can go ahead and use those vectors to cut from. One of the last things I want to look at is the cycles text. It's not the software's fault that the trace wasn't all that great. The bitmap quality was really not very good. And this is pretty decent for what it had to work with. But we're going to go ahead and replace that with some brand new text that will probably serve the purpose in the end. So let's go back to our pick tool. Let's press F on the keyboard to zoom out and to focus in on our whole job space. And go ahead and select our draw text tool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to type in the word cycles. Let's see. And then we're going to choose a font. In this particular case, I've got lots of fonts to choose from, but the one we're going to use is Arial. And then we are going to go ahead and just hit close and you'll see that it's right here. And we can just grab that. We're going to bring it up and I'm going to line up my C with the top of the text. Grab this bottom sizing handle here and just size it down. And then squish it in a bit. And it's not quite bold enough. So if I go back to my draw text again, I can go ahead and bold that up and press close. And that looks a little bit better. And now I can go ahead and just use all the tools I have here to try to get a nice fit. And it's not going to be perfect because I didn't do a whole lot of digging around my fonts to try and find one that was, that was spot on. But that looks pretty nice. Now to get rid of the old vectors, what I can do is I can select all of the new and old vectors there, hold down my shift key and just click on the new text and that will deselect it from my selection. And then I can press delete on my keyboard and there we have it. Now if I wanted to, I could use this as a basis to now go in and convert that to curves or ungroup that text and use my node editing tools and try and fix those letters in tighter to what the original ones were. But for this case, I think that looks pretty good. Now that I'm happy with my tracing, I think I should save this off so that I can use it in maybe a job down the road, a larger sign, or maybe some smaller coasters or something. So let's just go up to file and we're going to save as, and we're going to put in image to vector logo.crv. We'll save that off. I hope you found this video helpful and interesting. And what I suggest you do now is go find some low quality and some high quality bitmaps and play around a little bit with the trace bitmap tool and see what you can come up with. Anyway, be safe and I can't wait to see you again.